Welcome back to the IGCSE Computer Science Code 0478 guide. In this chapter, we'll be discussing about input and output devices. This chapter is extremely long, so bear with me for a while. I will also be dividing this chapter into two videos, one for input devices and one for output devices. Before we start, the concepts you will learn in this video include the various input devices such as scanners, barcode readers, QR code readers, digital cameras, keyboards, pointing devices, microphones, touchscreens, sensors, and interactive whiteboards. The various output devices, inkjet and laser printers, 3D printers, cutters, actuators, loudspeakers, monitors, and the DLP and LCD projectors how sensors are used in control and monitoring systems. Let's start with scanners. There are two types of scanners. A 2D scanner, it which converts a hard copy document into an image which can be stored as a digital file in a computer in an electronic form. To scan a 2D document, first, raise the scanner's cover, place the document, and close the cover. A bright light then illuminates the document and a scan head moves across the document until the page has been scanned. The image produced is sent to a lens. The lens focuses the image, which falls onto a charge couple device or CCD. Software produces a digital image from that image. Some computers are equipped with optical character recognition software. This allows a scanned document to be converted into a text file format, usually in .txt form. Uses of a 2D scanner. Some scanners are used in airports to read passports. OCR technology is used to produce digital images which represent passport pages. This can be converted into a text file which may be used to automatically detect the passenger's passport number to be placed in an existing database. Airports also use 2D scanners to scan the passenger's photograph in the passport as an image. A digital camera is then used to detect the passenger's face and match it with the one, with the one in the photograph. Software is then used to detect facial features such as the distance between the eyes, the width of nose, the shape of cheekbones, the length of jawline, and the shape of eyebrows. 3D scanners. They are used to scan solid objects to produce a 3D image which can be used in a computer-aided design or sent to a 3D printer to produce a model of the scanned image. They function by taking images at several points across the X, Y, and Z coordinates. The uses of 3D scanners. Medical uses, such as CT and MRI scanners. Industrial uses. Existing objects can be scanned into digital format, which can be then altered and tested using software. 3D scanners use a process known as tomography, where the image of a solid object is built up through thin slices. Each slice is stored as a digital image in the computer's memory. So, Multiple slices make up the full image. On the right, we can see an MRI scan of, the pers of a person's brain. Barcode scanners. A barcode is a series of dark and light parallel lines of varying thickness. The series of lines each represent the numbers 0 to 9. The left and right hand sides of the barcode are separated using guard bars. A barcode scanner is used to read barcodes and transmit data to a computer. They can be found in supermarkets and stores. The process of scanning a barcode. First, the barcode is read by a laser or LED. Light is reflected back of the barcode. The dark areas reflect no light, which allows the bars to be read. The reflected light is read by sensors and a generated pattern is converted into digital data, allowing the computer to read the barcode. The 
diagram on the top right shows an example of a barcode. Uh, you, don't, you don't actually need to memorize this, but it may be useful to understand the parts of a barcode. The picture on the bottom right shows a barcode reader, which we can commonly see in stores and supermarkets. So, after a barcode is read, the barcode number is looked up in the stock database. Each barcode is unique from each other and identifies a specific stock item. The price and other details are sent back to the checkout or point of sale terminal. The number of stock items is reduced by one every time a barcode is read. The stock of an item is then compared to the reorder level. If it is less than this value, stock items are automatically ordered. When the new items arrive, the stock levels are updated in the database. Advantages of using a barcode scanner Easier to change prices on items, automatic stock control, up-to-date sales information, and no need to price each item on the shelf, thus reducing time and cost. Quick Response or QR Codes It is a type of barcode which is made up of dark squares on a light background, shown by the image on the right. QR codes can hold over 7,000 digits, making them useful for storing information. To scan for a QR code, a QR scanner, usually in the form of an application or software, is used. QR codes are mostly scanned with smartphones since they are portable and have constant internet access. QR codes usually contain a link to a website or some form of advertisement. Advantages of QR codes Modern QR codes have their own encryption system. QR codes can store links to websites that appear in magazines, billboards, public transport, etc. And the user does not have to manually write down the web address since it is automatically done by the QR scanner. Digital cameras. They are used to capture images and videos digitally. Modern digital cameras can be linked to a computer via a USB port or Bluetooth. In fact, almost every camera we use today are digital cameras. Digital cameras are usually controlled by a microprocessor which can automatically adjust the shutter speed, adjust the aperture size, adjust the size of the image, remove red eyes when flash is used, and also flash automatically, and to focus the image automatically. How digital cameras operate. The photograph is captured when light passes through the camera's lens into a grid of pixels, or light-sensitive cells. We will learn more about pixels in Chapter 6. A shutter opens to allow light to pass through a CCD sensor at the back of the lens, which determines the color and light intensity of the image. The number of pixels determine the file size of the image. Keyboards. They are the most common method used for data entry. Keyboards can be connected to the computer, either through a USB cable or a wi wireless connection. Tablets and mobile phones have a virtual key keyboard, which is part of touchscreen technology. We will discuss about this later. Sometimes, a special keyboard known as an ergonomic keyboard is used in industries where typing is fre frequently utilized. The special placement of keys and support on ergonomic keyboards reduce hand injuries such as the repetitive strain injury or RSI. On the right, we can see that the structure of an ergonomic keyboard is designed to support the operator's hand and wrist. Pointing devices. They are used to click on icons in order to select an application on a computer screen. The most common pointing device is a mouse which comes in various forms. One traditional mechanical ball arrangement, to modern types that use LEDs to detect movement in the X and Y directions, and three, mice that use either one of the above types but use wireless connections such as Bluetooth. Sometimes, tracker balls are used in industries such as a control room. They do not need as much desk space and reduce injuries such as RSI. Laptops also have a built-in touchpad which detects the user's movement on the surface of the pad using a tactile sensor. Buttons to the left and right of the touchpad 
perform the same functions as the left and right buttons of a mouse. In the first picture, we can see a mechanical ball mouse. The second one is an LED mouse. The third one is a wireless USB mouse. And the fourth one is a wireless USB tracker ball mouse. Microphones. They are used to input sound to a computer. They can be built into the computer or connected via USB. When a microphone picks up a sound, a diaphragm vibrates which produces electrical signals that pass through a sound card. The sound card then converts the signals into digital values stored in a computer. Microphones can be used for voiceovers in a presentation, such as this video you're watching, a speech recognition system, a voice recognition system, and enabling a disabled person to communicate with a computer. In a voice recognition system, the user speaks a few words, which the sound card converts into a digital wave pattern. This is stored in the computer's memory. The next time the user speaks, the current wave patterns are matched with the stored wave pattern using software. If they match, the user is identified and access is granted. Only certain words can be detected since the system is not very complex. Voice recognition can be used in security systems. In a speech recognition system, the user's spoken words are recognized using software and shown on the user's screen on a, or a word processor. This uses more complex technology than voice recognitions. Examples of speech recognition systems are Siri and Amazon Alexa. Touchscreens. It utilizes touch to carry out functions of pointing devices such as a mouse, usually used in mobile phones. There are three types of touchscreens, capacitive, infrared, and resistive. You can refer to the diagram on the right to see the features, advantages, and disadvantages of each type of touchscreen. I've highlighted the important points in yellow. I also hope I don't get a copyright strike since I took this from my textbook. Sensors. They are devices which read and measure physical properties. Real data is analog in nature, which means it is constantly changing and has no discrete value. However, computers cannot make out these physical quantities, which is why data needs to be converted into a digital format. This is done using an analog to digital converter. ADC, a device that converts analog physical quantities into discrete digital values. Sometimes, computers also use a digital to analog converter, DAC, to control devices such as a motor or a valve. Frequently, an actuator, which is an electro electromechanical device such as a relay or solenoid, is also used to control devices. Here are the main types of sensors, each with an example. Applications of sensors 1. Control systems They are able to control and alter a process depending on the conditions. If conditions are outside the acceptable range, the microprocessor sends signals to control a motor, valve, etc. For example, turning street lights on and off during the daylight. Regulating air conditioning or heating systems. Changing traffic lights at a road junction. 2. Monitoring systems. They do not make changes to the process. Instead, they report the data it finds to the user. If the conditions are outside an acceptable range, the user is warned, for example, through an alarm or a flashing light. Therefore, monitoring systems are simply watching the process. Examples Monitoring a patient's heartbeat in a hospital. Monitoring of intruders in a burglar alarm system. Monitoring pollution levels in an environment. The diagram on the right shows the process on how monitoring systems and control systems work. Again, this is taken from the IGCSE computer science textbook. 
An example of a monitoring application is a burglar alarm system. First, a motion and acoustic sensor is used to detect bur burglars entering a building. The sensor data is passed through an ADC to produce digital data. The microprocessor will sample the digital data at a given frequency, such as 10 seconds. The data is compared with the stored values in the microprocessor. If the data values are outside the acceptable range, then a light starts flashing to indicate that a burglar is present in a building or a siren is used to sound an alarm. A DAC is also used if the devices are operated with analog values. An example of a control application, controlling street lighting. First, a light sensor detects the light intensity in the surroundings. The sensor data is passed through an ADC to produce digital data. The microprocessor will sample the digital data at a given frequency, for example, 10 seconds. The data is compared with the stored values in the microprocessor. If the data values is less than the value stored in the memory, then a signal is sent from the microprocessor to the street lamp using a DAC. The lamp is then switched on. The lamp stays on for 30 minutes or a given time interval to prevent the lamp from flickering on and off. If the data values is more or equal to the value stored in the memory, then a signal is sent from the microprocessor to the street lamp using a DAC. The lamp is switched off. The lamp stays off for 30 minutes or a given time interval to prevent the lamp from flickering on and off. And the last input device is the interactive whiteboard, which are devices that allow computer images to be displayed on a whiteboard using a digital projector. They allow the user to handwrite information on the whiteboard, which can be saved for future uses. We mostly see these in classrooms and meeting areas. So that's it for the input devices. I hope that this video has helped you and I will shortly post the second part of this chapter, which will be output devices. You can check the description box for the link to the next video.